To start off, it's important for us to define the two key terms we're using in this vlog. Dan defines a skill as a reflection of the athlete's ability to control their body accordingly, efficiently, and in a timely manner. Capacity, on the other hand, is the athlete's ability to express a given quality, either force, range of motion, or the amount of time they can hold a given task. However, he says it's important to recognize that these will often be a great deal of crossover between the skill and the capacity. The first thing we see here is the athlete doing a regular squat with no weight on, first from the side and then afterwards from the back. In the still picture from the back, we can clearly see that the right ankle slightly lifts off the ground and there is a small tilt from the left side to the right side occurring either at the hip and or the spine. Whether this is due to a capacity issue or a skill issue is still too early to determine and further investigation is needed. As the athlete has informed that he has previously had an injury on the right ankle, the natural thing was to check the flexibility of the ankles. Both ankles seem to have the needed range of motion to go through its squat. It can seem like the athlete has a defense mechanism where he slightly bends the previously injured ankle to restrain it from going into that position. So the athlete is struggling to control the body in an accurate manner even though it has the needed range of motion to do so. It can seem like this is a skill issue for that athlete. However, this might not explain the tilt that we previously saw in the video. I therefore decided to see the strength of the glutes and the flexibility in the groin area. We can see a large difference from the left side compared to the right, as the athlete might have a tighter groin and weaker glutes on that left side. This can explain the slight tilt toward the right, as the athlete does not have the flexibility in the groin that is needed and naturally wants to shift more to the right side. This capacity issue forces the athlete to not be able to control their body in an accurate manner. After doing drills where we loaded the athlete's right ankle in similar positions to make him more comfortable with the movement, the athlete was able to flex the ankle at a larger amount which indicates that it was in fact a skill issue. However, the tilt that we see was still occurring on that right side which could indicate that the flexibility and the force is in fact the issue for the left side. Here we see athlete 2 performing the squat first from the side in slow motion and then afterwards from the back. On the still picture from the side we can clearly see that some posterior pelvic tilt is occurring as the hip goes below the knee. This seems to be the main issue for the athlete. To determine what the reason for this was, the athlete performed a number of mobility and flexibility exercises for the muscles surrounding the hip. As we can see, the athlete has quite tight hamstrings that could be partially the reason for that pelvic tilt. We can also see that in the lying position, the pelvic tilt as the knee goes above the hip, which again suggests that the hamstring and the glute muscles are limiting and forcing the pelvic posterior as the hip goes below the knee. The groin seems to have a sufficient amount of the needed range of motion and shouldn't be a limiting factor for performing this squat for the athlete. Here we see the athlete rotating both left and right. Notice that the hip that we can see that the hip flexors are fairly tight and struggling to come into 45 degrees, which could, at the lower part of the squat, pinch the pelvic into a posterior position. One component of the capacity is the athlete's ability to produce force. It can be hard to determine if this is a limiting factor, mostly due to the difficulty setting a pinpoint to when we say it is an issue. For both athletes, as they are able to lift over 100 kilos with the same form shown in the videos, the force does not seem to be an issue for the movement. 
However, if it is needed of the athlete to be able to squat 120 kilos to perform the movements necessary for the given sport, it can be an issue. Due to this, it can be hard to say when force is an issue depending on if we see it as a movement-specific or sport-specific issue. Here we see athlete one performing the military press. First from the back and then following from the side. From the side still picture, we could see that he loses connection with his ribs, causing them to shift upwards and the barbell then going behind the athlete at the back end of the lift, which again causes him to lose balance. It seems like the athlete wants to lift the rib cage so that he could lift more with his chest muscles where he is the strongest. However, this can be determined just by looking at the lift itself. We therefore looked at the flexibility of the athlete's shoulder to see if he struggles to come into that position or if he is shifting back with the rib cage to lift more with the chest muscles as we mentioned. We can see that the ribcage slightly lifts up at the very end of the movement, but not nearly as much as when he was performing the lifts. As the weight is pretty light, it seems to be a skill issue. And after being cued to perform the lift once more, but tightening the abs to keep the ribcage down, the athlete performs the military press more stable and in an accurate and timely manner, supporting our theory that it in fact was a skill issue. Here we see athlete two performing the military press, first from the side and then from the back. We can see at the very top of the lift it is unstable and it loses its balance slightly. There are three main things that are worth noticing in these films. First off is the positioning of the shoulders at the very top of the lift. The shoulder on the left is intact and in a contracted position. It is also worth mentioning that the athlete is right handed and that the right shoulder should appear bigger as his right hand dominant. However this is not the case. The upper part of the trap trapezius muscle is also more engaged on the left side compared to the right. If we shift our attention down to the scap, we can see that the scap is more elevated and upward rotated on the left side. In addition to this, we can see that the athlete is extended at the back, at the top of the lift to keep the direction of the force going through his palm and through the rest of his body. When the athlete is informed to try to keep the back as straight as possible, while lifting the arms as far up and back we can see that the athlete is struggling especially the left side of the shoulder is struggling to straighten without extending the back and lifting the rib cage this could help explain why the athlete has to expend, extend at the back to be able to lift his arms overhead to maintain the direction of the force going through his arms However, this does not necessarily conclude why the left shoulder is more intact and why the left scap is more elevated and upward rotated when compared to the right side. We therefore looked at the shoulder's mobility while in an abducted position of the shoulder. The left side seems pretty stable and the shoulder is able to stay in the glenoid cavity. The right side, on the other hand, is not able to stay in that position at all and loses connection almost immediately upon movement. This could indicate that the muscles stabilizing the scapula like the serratus anterior are tight, which could again cause the scapula to be more in a more depressed state when lifting the hands above head. To summarize, athlete 1 seemed to have more skill related issues, whilst athlete 2 seemed to have more capacity related issues. However, these had a large crossover as we have discussed in this vlog.